everyone. Welcome to Gadgets with Gurman. Today we have another exciting episode. We'll be talking about Apple's new iPad Pros. We have both of them, as you can see here in our studio, the new 12.9 inch model and the new 10.5 inch model. They're both really nice, great upgrades if you're coming from an iPad older than the last generation iPad Pros. If you're someone new to the Pro market, someone who wants to use a tablet as a laptop replacement, these new iPad Pros are as good as they get. Now, there is more to the story. In the fall, Apple is going to come out with iOS 11. We'll talk about that more later in the show. It adds a lot of new functionality for making the iPad Pros more productive. So we'll get to that a little bit later. But first, I want to discuss the new 10.5 inch model. It's the newer of the two in terms of design and look. So let's do a, a deeper dive on that. So let's zoom in here on the 10.5 inch iPad Pro. Now, this is the successor to the 9.7 inch iPad Pro that was announced in March of last year alongside the iPhone SE. Now, the difference is the screen. The screen is 20% larger based on the diagonal change from 9.7 inches to 10.5 inches. Now, the overall form factor is very slightly, even almost unnoticeably, slightly bigger than the overall form factor of the 9.7 inch iPad Pro from last year but the screen is noticeably bigger. It makes the keyboard a little bit easier to type on. You get a little bit more room. The pixels are a little bit larger, so the resolution is a little bit better than the 9.7 inch model. They didn't just stretch it, they actually changed the pixel count. Now, you can see the bezels on the sides, on the right and left slides, are actually a little bit slimmer than last year's. It's still pretty easy to hold, it keeps the weight down, but basically what you're getting here is a bigger screen and a smaller form factor. And let's, let's zoom back out here. Uh, and discuss uh, some more of the, the differences. Now, this is a big deal, obviously, that they made the, the screen bigger on here while keeping the form factor smaller. Now, why is this a big deal? Because in the fall, the iPhone 8 is going to come out, and that's one of the main stories about the iPhone 8's design. A bigger screen, slightly bigger than the iPhone 7 Plus screen, but in a body that's about the size of the iPhone 7. So what we're seeing here is a little bit of the design uh, language and direction that they're going to be taking with the iPhone happening here on the iPad first which is interesting because Apple usually likes to address new designs and new features on the iPhones before the iPads, but such as these new iPad Pro upgrades, pretty pretty big updates year over year. Now please, uh, because this is Gadget Skirman, we want to make this an interactive show, so please if everyone can send in your questions on Twitter and Facebook and we'll, we'll get to them across the show, so thank you for that. Now while the iPad Pro 10.5 inch has a big change in terms of the design and the screen size from last year's model, there's actually sort of silently a lot of changes and additions happening with the 12.9 inch model. Now I've been using the first generation 12.9 inch iPad Pro since it came out in 2015 and I can tell you there's a lot to like that's new here specific to the 12.9 inch model. Now this model has some new features that they took from the 9.7 inch model last year. So for one, the flash on the back has been added. There's now an LED flash uh, for taking pictures and there's better cameras, we'll get to that in a minute. The design of the cellular antenna that you can see, see right here is a bit bigger. Let me, let me put this here so you can take a look on the screen. So you can see the design of the cellular antenna. Usually it was like black plastic, now they sort of made it metal. Uh, so more in line with last year's 9.7 inch model. And there's also the True Tone screen. Now I wanna show you that True Tone display live. Now the best way to show it is sort of in settings. So if we go to settings here, and when you first turn on the iPad, they can sort of walk you through it. Now, go into settings here and display and brightness, and then to True Tone. True Tone is on right now, right? Let's turn it off. Let me just up the brightness a little bit so you can see. Now, this is the, you know, the main iPad color, but when you turn True Tone on, you can see that it starts to adjust. You can see it's a little bit uh, warmer now. It sort of adjusts to the room and that's good for reading or playing games and you can see that adjustment when you turn it off. It's actually pretty significant uh, when you're using it in person. The camera doesn't really do it justice. Uh, another new feature for the 12.9 inch model specific is in the camera app. So now you can take uh, live photos. It's actually surprising that they couldn't add this to the older iPad Pro model uh, with a software update but at least they now have it now with the new hardware. Now there are of course other new features across the board that makes it you know, a big iPad Pro update for both models. Now, the most notable feature, I think, is this new ProMotion display, and we'll dive into that a little bit later in one of our Pro Tips. 
It also has the faster processor, brighter screens that reproduce colors much better. Uh, and back to the processor, it just flies, right? It's really fast with system navigation. Uh, you can really notice it when launching apps, like for example, it launched Safari. It's pretty instant. It's it's actually it's unbelievable. I've been using you know iPads always since 2010 in the beginning, and this is such a big jump, and it's it's uh, it's it's really a sight to see. Now some questions coming in here: Is the 120 hertz screen worth the upgrade alone from the original 12.9 inch iPad Pro? I saw a few people saying that the transition from uh, non-retina iPhones, like the iPhone 3GS, the iPhone 4, is akin to the transition from the standard uh, speed of display, so this 120 hertz. I disagree. It's significant. You notice it. It's really nice. It makes everything a bit faster. There is a big difference here, but it's not one of those changes where once you see it, you can't go back. Like once you used a retina display, it was very hard to go back to an older screen. It just looked so bad. Now, when you go to 120 hertz, you can notice the difference, but honestly, the transition is not as big as retina, in my opinion. Is it worth the upgrade alone for that feature? I would say no. I don't see the point of upgrading, paying $600, $700 just for that 120 hertz feature. If you're getting a new iPad or, old, or going from an older iPad, it's a really nice upgrade, a really nice addition, but that alone is not a reason to upgrade your iPad. Uh, another one coming in here, is the new 10.5 inch in stores already? Yes, the 10.5 inch iPad Pro is in stores. They have some stock of them. I actually got this one from an Apple store last night and they have them on display as well. So you can check them out if you want to use one in person. They also have some of the accessories, the, the keyboards, the cases, which we'll, we'll get more into. Uh, do you see the promotion of the True Tone coming to the next iPhone? That's a very good question. I hope so. True Tone, I didn't have a True Tone iPad until I started testing out these ones uh, earlier this week, but it makes a big difference, and I wish that it would come to the iPhone as well as the higher uh, screen rate, refresh rate, the 120 hertz. Those are both big changes, and I would anticipate them coming to the iPhone eventually, if not this year, the year after. But obviously, Apple likes to come out with a new feature and then bring that enhancement across the line. Another feature here, will the same smart keyboard accessories work on the new 12.9 inch iPad Pro? That's a good question. Yes, this is, I actually have the smart keyboard here, um, and it connects the same way. You have the keyboard connector on the bottom here. You just can clip it on and you know type away it's the same as last year so yes it fits uh, if you get the 10.5 inch you can't really go from the 9.7 inch smart cover or smart keyboard cover to the 10.5 inch it might work might be a little bit flimsy but it's definitely a new keyboard whereas the 12.9 inch it's the exact same accessory let's see other questions coming in here does this already come with iOS 11? That's a good question. No, iOS 11 actually comes out in the fall. Has a bunch of new features we'll get into, but that's not out yet. There's gonna be a public beta toward the end of the month, so stay tuned for that. Another one coming in here, is it made of the same material as the older ones? Yes, it's, uh, it's the same. It's an iPad. It's the same glass on the front, metal on the back. I haven't noticed any material differences. Uh, something that is actually interesting uh, to note before, when Apple had the bigger iPad and the smaller iPad or different iPhones, the 7 Plus versus the 7, there are small differences, right, in terms of the processor speed and whatnot, but these two are actually identical. They're exactly the same in functionality, so you'll get the same experience, just the screen size is different, the speed, the RAM, 4 gigabytes, by the way, uh, it's all the same. Another question, does it have a voice assistant? How is memory and battery life? Yes, they both obviously come with Siri and how is memory and battery life? So the changes here on the base models, they now come 64 gigabytes from the beginning standard, $650 uh, for the 10.5 inch model and $800 for the 12.9 inch model. Battery life, haven't tested the battery life long enough to, to give a definitive answer, but Apple is claiming 10 hours as they, as they always have. It's, it's interesting from the very beginning to now, the battery life hasn't changed from 10 hours. I would think that the battery life would improve maybe at some point, even though they keep adding features. Maybe they like that round number. I remember some iPads maybe got up to 12 hours a few years ago based on some benchmarks, but you'll probably certainly get around 10 hours based on Apple's claims. Now we have uh, some more here. These iPad Pros have the ProMotion display like I mentioned, and I sort of want to demonstrate this, right? So let me uh, take this one out. Right, in the ProMotion display, you really can get a good sense of it when using the Apple Pencil on uh, the iPad Pro, and I actually have it paired with this one, right? And you can see how smooth navigation is. If you're drawing, 
Uh, the accuracy is actually improved as well. So if you're handwriting, I remember last year when I was handwriting with the Apple Pencil on the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, it felt almost as good as a real mechanical wooden pencil in terms of the accuracy, the latency and whatnot. But this year I have to say it's pretty on par. It's a, it's a noticeable difference. I'm not a drawer or an architect or anything like that by any means, but it's definitely a significant upgrade, uh, which says a lot given how good it was already. So, I mean, if you're drawing here, it's pretty, pretty accurate. Hi, my name is Mark, right. Um, you can draw it and I know it's, it's hard to see because, uh, you know, it's hard to capture the computer screen on camera, but, uh, you know, take my word for it. It looks, it looks pretty good. Now, it also really is great when you're in maps. I remember I was zooming in and out of maps, and it's, it's really fast to zoom in and out. We have some more questions coming in here. What are key reasons to buy the Pro versus non-Pro? That's a, that's a good question. It comes back to uh, a point I was going to make later in the show. But if you're coming from a non-Pro iPad, you would want an iPad Pro because it has the smart connector. Now, this smart connector as you can see here, this little grill right here, the three dots, it allows you to connect the smart keyboard. And I know there's third-party companies like Logitech, which make uh, some accessories for the, for the smart connector. You can connect keyboards, all sorts of stuff. Uh, hopefully, it opens up more to more types of accessories later. Also, support for the Apple Pencil. And, of course, the you know, faster speed, the bigger screen sizes, the better color reproduction. Also, the cameras are far improved on this, in addition to the LED flash, which the cheaper iPads, the one including the 9.7-inch model I came out earlier this year and the iPad mini don't have, it has the same camera system as the iPhone 7, which means it's a 7-megapixel camera on the front, which is a big improvement over the 5 previously, as well as a 12-megapixel camera on the back, which is a big upgrade on the bigger iPad Pro going from 8 to 12. Also, 4K video recording, which the cheaper iPads don't have on both of the 10.5-inch and 12.9-inch models. Another question, why buy this instead of a Microsoft Surface Pro? Can you compare them? That's a, a very good question, but it's, it's difficult to compare the iPad with iOS 10 as it is right now to the Surface Pro, given the Surface Pro runs a more full version of Windows with better multitasking, drag and drop and all that. When iOS 11 comes out in the fall, it's sort of a different ball game. You're gonna have better support for the Apple Pencil. You're gonna have better support uh, for drag and drop, multitasking. You can actually open three windows at once while playing a video. So there is a significant improvement there. You're not gonna get a real Mac desktop experience ever with iOS 11, unless they add more between now and the release in the fall. But it's a huge improvement based on, you know, playing with it myself and seeing it going from iOS 10 to iOS 11 on the iPad. I know a lot of people who really praise iPad productivity and iPad keyboard accessories and iOS and all that are really excited about it. So it's a real big change and we'll be sure to demo iOS 11 and do those comparisons and improvements when the, when the seeds, you know, improve over time. Right now they're a bit buggy, but as they get better, we'll have more on that. Another question. Is there a noticeable improvement of the performance of these new iPads, especially with the Apple Pencil? Yes, the, the app launching speeds, I was actually comparing between last or the 2015 iPad Pro 12.9 inch with this one. The app launching speeds are a bit faster on this. It's very noticeable. The latency, uh, everything is much faster and snappy with the, with the Apple Pencil, especially on, the, on these new models. If you upgrade, do you have to buy all new accessories like the cover or will the old cover fit? The smart cover on the 12.9 inch iPad uh, will continue to work. The smart keyboard, the Apple Pencil will also work with the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. If you're going from the 9.7 inch iPad Pro to the 10.5 inch iPad Pro, the Apple Pencil will still work of course because it's the same screen technology, the same everything, all that. However, you will need to get new cases because the size of the screen, the size of the overall body is a little is a little bit different. So you also need a new smart keyboard. I know they have the 12.9 inch iPad Pro keyboards haven't changed, but they now sell the 9.7 inch iPad Pro smart keyboard for last year's model, along with a 10.5 inch iPad Pro smart keyboard for this year's model. Now, let's talk a little bit more about iOS 11. So they're coming out with a new public beta C. They announced the WWDC toward the end of the month. I don't know if this is gonna to correspond to the second or third developer beta, but by then, the battery life improvements and whatnot will probably be a bit better. I know some people who've already installed the first iOS 11 seed on their new iPad Pro 10.5 inch, and these people say that it feels like this beta was designed specifically for this device. They were testing it really closely because the performance of the beta one on iOS 11 
for the 10.5 inch iPad Pro is much better than their experience of iOS 11 beta one on their iPhone 7. So take that for what you will, but obviously I would wait till the public beta comes out. I haven't loaded the beta on these iPads yet. So I'm really gonna hold out and see uh, these betas get a little bit better first before putting them on production devices. Now, people are asking what else comes new with iOS 11. So there's this customizable control center on the iPad. You can slide it out from the right on the iPhone from the bottom. You can put more widgets in there. You can put a quick access to your home stuff, your Apple TV, brightness, cellular data, a lot of improvements from there. In terms of the cameras, you know, like I said, if you're a photography fan, uh, it's a big change. If you're someone who is using, like I know some people who use the big iPad Pro as sort of a monitor for uh, a camera system or a big equipment in studios, the iPad 12.9 inch camera improvement is significant. We're from eight megapixels to 12 megapixels. Same cameras as the iPhone 7. As we know, the iPhone 7 cameras are pretty good. Live photos are new. Now uh, we have people asking about the prices. So the 12 point nine inch model is $800, but we have the 10.5 inch model starts at $650. And this is the 10.5 inch model for those joining us now. Now that's a $50 increase over the 599 starting price of the 9.7 inch iPad Pro from last year. However, the difference is we're going from 32 gigabytes to 64 gigabytes. So they're actually doubling the storage while, in pricing, while increasing the price by $50. Usually it's a $100 charge for doubling the, the storage memory base. Basically, that's how they normally do it. They do $100 increments and then double the storage from that and obviously all the improvements that come with it. Uh, but again, if you're someone who is looking for a tablet as a laptop replacement, looking for a real pro device, when iOS 11 comes out, you'll want to take a look at these. But if you're more of a casual user, someone who wants to do like gaming, Facebook browsing, watching Netflix, downloading movies on iTunes, that cheaper $329 iPad with the 9.7 inch screen that we had on the show earlier this year is actually a really strikingly good deal. That is the same price that the iPad mini came at uh, years ago without a retina display. This has retina and whatnot. I think that's a real, real smashing deal, uh, especially if you're not gonna take advantage of all the iOS 11 drag and drop features, which by the way, will still run on that iPad. So these are really for someone who wants to connect a keyboard with a smart connector, use the Apple Pencil and get the fastest specs, the best cameras uh, possible. This was Gadgets with German. These are the new iPad Pros, the 10.5 inch model and the 12.9 uh, inch model. Starts at $650. And we'll be back soon with, a, with another device and we'll be sure to play with iOS 11 and show you all the pro tips for those on these new iPads and the iPhone uh, when the later seeds come out. Thank you so much.